So now let us discuss about overall prognosis if you see. Out of all the different types of thyroid cancers, papillary has a good prognosis and the poor prognostic factors if you see in this more than 40 years, male gender, extra thyroid extension, tumor size which is large and the tumor which is non-encapsulated, distant metastasis, aneuploidy, all these are considered to be poor prognostic markers. And if you see the another one which is anaplastic which we already discussed, anaplastic one has particularly poor prognosis with 100% mortality and there is a local extension into the neck. And medullary carcinoma has a good prognosis where younger age, female gender, familial, confide to the gland, extensive amyloid, all these are considered to be good prognostic markers. What about the overall clinical manifestations of the thyroid carcinomas? The important clinical manifestations include nodule or mass in the neck. Because of the presence of nodule or mass in the neck, Aereo digestive compression kind of symptoms can be seen that is dysphagia, hoarseness owing to local compression by the tumors. And if we talk specifically about the papillary type, it can metastasize to the local lymph nodes. And the follicular is the one can metastasize to the lungs and bone via hematogenous spread. And medullary is the one secretes calcitonin from the C cells associated with men to be and more prone to metastasis typically via lymphatic as well as through the blood. And anaplastic is the last one which is undifferentiated and sarcomatoid carcinoma which is rapidly growing mass with dyspnea as well as dysphagia. So this is what you have to know about uh, the important prognostic markers of the various thyroid carcinomas. And if you talk about the thyroid adenomas. Thyroid adenomas are common and microscopically if you see they contain uniform colloid filled follicles although there are various histological types and they are not considered to be a pre-malignant and usually non-functional. And what is a fetal adenoma? Fetal adenoma is the term which is used typically for the follicular adenoma of the thyroid. What about MEN1 syndrome? MEN1 syndrome is also called as Vermeer syndrome. Here, three P's you need to identify for the MEN1 syndrome. One is parathyroid hyperplasia or adenoma. Second P stands for pancreatic islet cell hyperplasia or adenoma which leads to gastrinomas. And the third P stands for pituitary adenoma where the mutant gene is MEN1 where the samoma bodies are seen in papillary carcinoma of the thyroid, meningiomas and serous cyst adenoma of the ovary. So if you talk about uh, papillary thyroid tumors, whenever you talk about the papillary thyroid tumors, you always remember six P's. One is popular which means most common. Second one is palpable lymph node because it is spread by lymphatics. Third P is positive which means positive for I-131 uptake, fourth P stand for the positive prognosis which means excellent prognosis, fifth P stand for post radiation in the head and neck which is the most common cause and the last P stand for samoma bodies. So all these six P's you need to remember for papillary carcinoma of the thyroid and for the follicular carcinoma of the thyroid you have to remember four F's. First F is for female, second F is for far away metastasis, third F is for favorable prognosis and the fourth F is the flow of blood because vascular invasions are more common. This is how you can remember four F's for follicular carcinoma of the thyroid. So papillary carcinoma, six P's, follicular carcinoma, four F's and now medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, you have to remember three M's. The first M stands for men association which means it is associated with men 1A as well as men 1B. And second M stands for median node dissection and the third M stands for amyloid A is silent. So amyloid I can say which is associated with amyloidosis. 
So this is how you can remember papillary, follicular as well as medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. Now let us discuss about uh, histopathology of various thyroid carcinomas as well as adenomas. First is the findings on surgical histology what you can see over here. In this picture this is the surgical specimen which is showing the classic histologic appearance of the papillary cancer with a papillary structure and no follicles which are seen or colloid and the follicular development can be seen in some of these carcinomas if it is a follicular variant of the papillary cancer and the diagnosis is made from the cytologic features of the cell and if you see the second image it is a sporadic macro follicular goiter with normal macro follicles and findings on the surgical histology if you see in this picture very clearly that the surgical specimen of the sporadic macro follicular goiter with normal large thyroid follicles which is filled with the colloid and these follicles are disrupted by the needle biopsy so the colloid will smear across the slide or occasionally aggregate into droplets and the third image is very important to identify it is a papillary carcinoma with sticky colloid where appearance on the fine needle aspirate of the thyroid what you can see over here this one is the fine needle aspirate of the papillary carcinoma which is showing a scant colloid which appears to stick to the laminated samoma bodies instead of smearing across the slide and let us talk about the next slide which is colloid from the macro follicular nodule and the findings are from a fine needle aspirate in this the papine colloid stain showing a colloid which is usually abundant in the background of macro follicular lesions and the next image where you can see over here there is an epithelioid joint cell appearance on fine needle aspirate of the thyroid and here this is the fine needle aspirate of the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid showing an epithelioid joint cell and next picture if you see this picture is very important to identify that it is a medullary thyroid cancer and it is a surgical specimen and if you see the details about this it is a pathological specimen of bilateral and multicentric medullary carcinoma of the thyroid which you can clearly see in this image on fine needle aspirate with immunostraining for the calcitonin in the medullary cancer of the thyroid so where you can see here that the nuclei of the tumor cells are placed eccentrically and are larger and more pleomorphic than those of the normal follicular cells and the immunohistologic staining for calcitonin is positive where brown staining which is the best seen at the arrow marks and the background contains many red cells that non specifically taken up by the strain and next a very important image what you need to identify over here is the samoma body which is the appearance on the fine needle aspirate of the thyroid so if you see this from the fine needle aspirate of papillary carcinoma of the thyroid showing a samoma body so the laminations can best be appreciated under the microscope by moving the depth of the focus and next image is for the papillary thyroid cancer which is the findings on fine needle aspirate if you see the details about this image this is the fine needle aspirate of the thyroid nodule showing a papillary cancer so the cells as well as the nuclei what you can see over here are large as well as their cytoplasm where you can clearly see has a ground glass appearance right so the nucleoli are prominent and the nuclei have clefts grooves and holes mainly due to the presence of intranuclear cytoplasmic inclusions called as orphan any eyes and next one is the last one which is the hercle cell lesion appearance on the fine needle aspirate of the thyroid nodule if you see this this is the fine needle aspiration biopsy specimen showing mostly eosinophilic exophilic cells with the abundant cytoplasm and round oval nuclei with the prominent nucleoli by this we discussed 
various gross as well as histopathological pictures which are related to various types of thyroid carcinomas as well as adenomas.